athletes. Inhibiting these two roadblocks to muscle building provides a huge advantage. It does take athletes to the next level. If you are swinging a bat, you can use a heavier bat or you can swing it faster. If you're running, sprinting, you can run faster. That's why you find so many athletes using them. Steroids are incredibly effective. A young guy who eats badly, sleeps badly, smokes, drinks too much alcohol, misses half of his gym workouts, and takes steroids can blow away the most dedicated, most gifted athlete who does not take steroids in terms of sheer muscle gain. But to achieve those gains takes high doses of steroids. Most doctors prescribe anabolic steroids in what they call a physiologic dose. The amount of testosterone a man produces naturally. Some endurance athletes who want to reduce recuperation between workouts use a physiologic dose of steroids. Some sprinters with higher strength and power needs may use twice the natural amount. But what about bodybuilders and weightlifters? In some of the studies that we have done, we have encountered guys who are taking the equivalent of 100 times the natural output of testosterone. In other words, if you figure that the normal male testis manufactures between 50 and 75 milligrams of testosterone a week, we've seen guys who are taking five or 6,000 milligrams of testosterone or its equivalent per week from injections or pills. And the more you take, the bigger you can get. For many athletes, anabolic steroids seem like the proverbial fountain of youth. Steroids have profound effects. You could see results in as little as two weeks, maybe even less. You'll start to actually see an increase in muscle size pretty rapidly. If you train for endurance, your muscles are going to take on endurance-like characteristics. If you train for strength, your muscles are going to take on strength characteristics. And if you're going to train for size, your muscles are going to take on size-like characteristics. Most athletes have a small window of opportunity. In some sports, it may only be a few years. I can understand when an athlete comes to me, a 19-year-old kid comes to me on the brink of signing a $50 million contract, numbers that most of us can't even imagine at 19 years of age. What is your choice going to be? It's, it's clear cut. And, and as, as bad as that sounds, as a coach, I'm telling the kids how to try to do this naturally. That's when some athletes turn to anabolic steroids for an extra edge to beat the clock and cash in on success. But the risks of indiscriminate steroid use remain undefined, and many experts fear that these users may eventually pay a medical price. In 1991, one athlete became the poster boy for steroid dangers. Former NFL player Lyle Alzado announced he was dying of central nervous system lymphoma. He blamed steroids. Yet even in his confession, Alzado diluted the dangers. There was a double-edged sword to his comments that he made in Sports Illustrated. What he told the world is, yes, steroids caused my problem, but there is a safe way to take steroids but not without a doctor's supervision. Experts agree the abuse of steroids comes with several undesirable side effects. Men may experience a number of short-term cosmetic changes. They can include severe acne on the back, as well as on the face. Gynecomastia, the accumulation of fat under the nipples, causing the breasts to swell and even testicular atrophy, the shrinking of the testicles to half their normal size. For women, the androgenic or masculinizing side effects are more pronounced, including male pattern baldness, growth of facial hair, and even a permanent deepening of the voice. The breasts may also shrink and the clitoris enlarge. Other side effects are debatable. One is a spike in aggression from steroid use, known as roid rage. Atlanta authorities are investigating the bizarre murder-suicide involving professional wrestler Chris Benoit 
and are asking if steroids could have played a part. Animal and human studies show high doses of testosterone increase aggression. Yet few anabolic steroid users undergo a change of personality. Steroids make an unstable person more unstable. They make an aggressive person more aggressive. It's usually been a person who's had problems. So it hasn't been a Jekyll and Hyde where you've been a kind, caring, docile, a friendly person and turn them into an aggressive monster. Studies suggest only a minority of users turn violent. Between 1993 and 2000, four double-blind clinical trials administered high doses of steroids to 109 men. Roughly 5% experienced reckless or aggressive behaviors. You can have five different guys who take the same dose of steroids, four of whom will have virtually no psychiatric changes and one of whom will go completely berserk. Yet some doctors feel roid rage is exaggerated. You give me State College, Pennsylvania, in Ann Arbor, Michigan, on a football Saturday, and I will show you as many cases of alcohol-induced rage as you will see in the United States in 50 years from anabolic steroids. Roid rage isn't the only side effect under debate. People take steroids, men and women, because it works. But it comes at a price. The price, perhaps life itself. Professional bodybuilder Steve Mahalik was once Mr. USA, and Mr. America, and Mr. Universe. He was also a devout steroid user. Mahalik began using steroids in 1975 to prepare for the Mr. Universe competition. He kept using them for 10 years. He believes steroids helped buy something priceless, the pinnacle of bodybuilding. I used them a ton, but you know, whatever comes up must come crashing down eventually. Finally, I collapsed on the stage and went to the hospital and I had two grapefruit-sized tumors on my liver. Mahalik embodied what many scientists believe. In the short term, steroids may build your body, but in the long run, you pay a price. On the outside, a steroid user might just look bigger, more masculine, but on the inside, doctors believe this could happen. One type of oral steroid has been linked to tumors and cancers of the liver. Others have suffered a rare condition called peliosis hepatitis, where blood-filled cysts form on the liver and can rupture, causing internal bleeding. Some studies also suggest that tumors can form on the kidneys, decreasing function. As the body loses its ability to filter the blood, toxins build up, leading to fluid retention, increased blood pressure, and eventually, kidney failure. But even more alarming is the effect of steroids on the heart. Steroids can dramatically alter cholesterol levels, increasing the risk of heart attack or stroke. A catalog of life-threatening diseases. Steve Mahalik has had them all. Liver tumors, pancreatitis, gallbladder disease, a heart attack, a stroke, and the list goes on. All my organs were shutting down one by one, piece by piece. And all my arteries were clogged, all seven in my heart. I had no blood going to my heart. The doctor opened me up. He said he saw more blood in a dead person than he saw of me being alive. Steve has company. Spare the pain, spare the shame. Let's go. My group of, of champion bodybuilders, 70, 80s bodybuilders, are now just starting getting bypass surgery, who's getting valve replacement surgery who has liver problems, kidney problems, who died from a heart attack. It's all happening. No one ever smoked. Or they didn't drink. Our diets were impeccable. We exercised as well as did aerobic cardiovascular work. We followed every natural rule and law to keep us healthy and alive. Except they all used steroids. That's the difference. There's that one variable. It's only one variable amongst all of us. But while Mahalik blames steroids, science has reservations. 
In the last 70 years that these drugs have been used in medicine, I'm not aware of any study that's evaluated their long-term effects. You know, a lot of what you see on, on some of these issues is case studies or anecdotes. So this person used steroids and he had a liver cancer, he had a kidney tumor, and, and from a methodology standpoint, that's the lowest of the low. I mean, you cannot prove cause and effect. I mean, you just can't do it. Proving cause and effect is made harder by steroid users who often mix other drugs, including growth hormone, insulin, thyroid hormone, and amphetamines. So you have this cauldron, this witch's brew, and then people ask me, well, anabolic steroids is in that cauldron. What effect do they have in combination with all these other drugs? I go, got me. But it's interesting because it's always the steroids that are pinpointed as the culprit. For scientists, pinpointing the dangers of steroids has been difficult. The evidence may be there, but it has proven elusive. Science still doesn't know what is going to happen in the long term with steroids. On the one hand, there are hundreds of thousands of people who have used the drugs who don't appear superficially to be particularly the worst for wear. But then on the other hand, there are every few months stories about another old-time bodybuilder or athlete who abruptly died under somewhat mysterious circumstances. Pro wrestler Brian Pillman died at 35 of a heart attack. Wrestler Eddie Guerrero died at 38 from heart disease. And Davy Boy Smith was dead at 39. Three deaths in the last decade, all from heart disease and all with a common suspect. For years, doctors have suspected a link between steroids and heart disease. Steroids lower the level of HDL cholesterol in the bloodstream, also known as good cholesterol. Doctors believe HDL protects the cardiovascular system from heart disease. While steroid users may look perfectly healthy on the outside, the inside can tell a different story. Steroids can also dramatically raise bad cholesterol, or LDL. This can cause a hardening of the arteries and a significant buildup of plaque along the artery wall. As plaque clogs the artery, blood flow is restricted. If left unchecked, it can cause a heart attack. Likewise, if any plaque breaks off, it can lodge in smaller blood vessels, causing a heart attack or stroke. And the damage can be done after only a few years of steroid use. Exhibit A is Danny McDermott. Now a 54-year-old financial advisor, Danny was once a champion bodybuilder. Back when I was competing, and you want to be at that you know, national level, the international level, you could bet your competitions using steroids. So was Danny. At 36, seven years after quitting steroids in bodybuilding, he took a body blow. The you know, doctor came and said, you just had a massive heart attack and you're lucky to be alive. McDermott is now a patient of Dr. Larry Santora, a director of cardiac CT at California's Orange County Heart Institute. In the fall of 2006, Santora published the first ever observational study on steroids and heart disease. It was also the first study to use an electron beam CT scanner to see how much plaque had built up in steroid users. A significant amount had severe plaque at a very early age in their 30s, the type of plaque that you might see in somebody in their uh, 70s or 80s. All three of your major arteries, you have atherosclerosis or plaque in each of those. To get to this level of, of bodybuilding and, and a professional athlete who uses it and performs, they're going to need to take it for several years, and that's when you're going to start to see the effect. And these guys have been doing it for 10, 12, 15 years.